Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. We are Chase Emilia and today we are reacting to Hillsong United. This is an old school performance. I'm sorry, it's not a performance. This is an old school recording and this is Oceans Where Feet May Fail. Trust me, you know the song. <laughs> Trust me, you know it. Everyone and we're song. here for Taya. We're here to react to Taya, okay? Uh, she sings this song. She's the lead singer of this song. She's kind of known this song really like oh, yeah. took off her career. She's more of an a solo artist now, I think, or she's a solo album out now. But anyway, she's part of Hillsong United. We're so excited to react to her singing this. Um, this is the Live in Israel performance. So this is a very special and impactful performance. And before we get started on this video, there's a small disclaimer that we like to give. Um, worship leading and vocal performance are two different things. They will be used in combination when you are worship leading, but today we are just talking about singing. We're not talking about worship leading. We're going to break down the technique that we're hearing in Taya. We really look up to her as a vocalist. And so we're gonna break down things that we're hearing so that we can apply it to our singing and hopefully you can do the same and we can all learn something, get better at singing. Absolutely, awesome. I'm super excited. I, I have looked up to Taya as a worship leader for a long time. Absolutely. And, um, and in our worship leading, I think we've, we've all had her voice in our ears. Yes. So um, really looking forward to this and let's get started. sing together. I haven't heard the song in so long. I know. <laughs> um, yeah, it's I already got the feels. Man, it's it's such a it's such a great song. You know, everyone started hating it because it was so it was played so much. A lot. At least everybody in our in our world. Oh, and every kind of I think every church overplayed this song. A bit. Yeah. So, but I haven't heard it in so long, and it's just yeah. such a such a good one. Um, I think she's doing something here that. It sounds great, mm -hmm. but also kind of breaks the rules. I, absolutely. You know? Yes. Um, she kind of goes straight to the end yep. on some of them. Uh, I heard it too. I can't remember it? what the Let example. me go back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So right there. You call me out upon the waters. Yep. And it sounds great and all that kind of stuff. But like, mm -hmm. I think this is like one of those examples where, you know, the rules yeah. serve you until you make a choice as an artist to, to, not, to, to not necessarily do that. Absolutely. Um, and I think something that I do naturally is I kind of always, sing, I always try to sing on the vowel. Yeah. Upon the waters. Yeah. And the end kind of comes right at the end of that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's a dynamic choice. Yeah. Also, this is probably the umpteenth time she sang this song yeah. you know what i mean like i think that after a certain point when you sing a song so much you have to change it and and it's so funny like us t bringing this up might seem ridiculous to you guys because you're like who cares that she sang on the end i think it's sure. more just about it is obvious to us that that is something that she is doing um that she doesn't typically do like when you listen to this recording and it's also something that we would make a different choice in yeah. if we're being super intentional with yeah. how we would sing this song. I have a lot of voice students. Yeah. And if, if they were singing like that, I'd be like, Oh, you know, I, I, in my opinion, mm -hmm. where you get the most tone sound, yeah. you know, you know, beautiful singing is when you're just singing on the vowel, you don't want to sing yeah. through an N or an M or an L. Right. Um, you know, but that's not to say that it's bad, but it is no. definitely something we like to point out. Absolutely. You know, because because we use all this stuff so that we can get better and that yeah. we can hopefully break stuff down for other people too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we like to talk about singing as it serves worship leading. But totally. We, you know, we're experts in singing. Right. Not necessarily experts in worship leading. And I think too, like, not to beat this too much, but I feel like 
this is one of those things that we notice from the vocal perspective mm -hmm. because a lot of times you don't think about that in worship leading or there's we find in worship culture a lot of times there's not a there's not in the professionals we're not talking about professionals right but there's a lot of times where people aren't really thinking about it as singing and there is a reality that we are singing and we are mm -hmm. using an instrument you know your guitar players they're treating their instrument like instruments mm -hmm. your keyboard players everybody in a worship team is using their instruments just like secular musicians are mm -hmm. and so i think as vocalists we have to remember that our voice is our instrument and so these are just little things that we know as being vocalists yeah. and and from the technical perspective of being vocalists yeah. and it sounds really like tedious and stuff but i think it helps us for us our passion about it is it makes us intentional to yeah. bring our excellence right it makes us intentional it gives us all of the palette of colors yeah. to make choices to paint the best picture that we can you know and that's our responsibility Last little soapbox. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm going to say something great first. It's great. It's going to be great. <laughs> Whatever I'm going to say next great. is going to be great. <laughs> um, she has so much clarity. Mm. And um, I just find her voice so vibrant yeah. and full. It's it's kind of intoxicating. She yeah. does that wherever she sings. She's yeah. singing kind of lower. If she's singing crazy high because mm -hmm. she can really get up there. Um, at least in the the belty kind of range. Mm -hmm. um, and she's got a head voice. And she's got, you know, it's just, mm -hmm. it's objectively beautiful singing. Absolutely. And I think one of the things that I think she's, you can hear is she's using a ton of air. Mm -hmm. I will call upon your name. She's really, mm -hmm. and I will call, you know, it's, everything's really full and well supported. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, we said this in some previous videos, and I say this all the time in my lessons, but, like, I always think of fogging a mirror. Mm. And I will call. It kind of just brings so more air, air out of you. Yeah. And that helps your vo your vocal folds just work that much better. Yeah. I It's kind of along the same lines. I want to point out that chorus, if you've sung this song before, which if you're a worship leader, I'm just going to guarantee you've you sung have this sung song this song before. before. And for most of us, it's a challenge. Like, this song came out, and churches loved it and it was tough it was tough because it's not an easy song Taya is not your average vocalist right like she is out there writing and singing and and you know leading these songs that are pretty extreme yeah. like and so this chorus is a great example and she does two things that I think are really interesting um specifically in what we just heard she starts with with her head voice and I call upon your name and then she immediately flip, flips and keep my eyes and keep my eyes above the waves now all of that is so like subjective like to whether or not that was a choice whether or not that was you know she I I've had moments where you kind of like panic vocally sometimes like maybe you lose what you're doing and maybe singing it in the area head voice is more difficult and so you kind of bring up the chest i'm not speculating as to why she chose it but it's super interesting because you have that choice and and this this chorus is difficult because as this song grows there's a requirement for a more full belty you can't get away with the head voice you have to you know at least i think most of us feel this way to serve the song well you have to give it your all and so i think it's a really interesting chorus because you know that that skill that it requires because here we're here talking about skill and technical you know technique that it requires is pretty 
I would call advanced. Absolutely. Uh, this is an advanced Absolutely. worship song. <laughs> and the reason why we talk about this stuff is because is because we have all been in the situation yeah. where you're just trying to get through a song Absolutely. or you're, or you're just, you know, you're the third song right before the message is a, is a butt kicker Absolutely. and you're just trying to hang in there because you're there to serve the congregation. You're there right. to serve other people. And when you're struggling just to sing the song that mm. that's difficult. And so what we believe is that if you grow your skill in singing, yeah. you will be able to serve your church better. even more you know Absolutely. even more yeah and so you know it's uh i think that's why tay is one of those super impressive and, mm-hmm. and we would love we would all love to sing like that yeah um and so try i think it's Give also it evident too that she has such a she is a master of her instrument mm-hmm. like she is a vocalist you know she is um not just like i don't believe I don't know this. I'm going to guess. I don't believe she's self-taught. I think she probably has some sort of lessons training or coach or, or something. There's a lot of intention in the way she sings that makes me believe that she, um, you know, isn't just doing this or hasn't just done this like totally. on her own. Anyway, let's just keep listening. There's things there. of how she sings There's that sound she... like she's trained. Totally. Totally. Yeah. yeah. 100%. But this chorus is a doozy. <laughs> In deepest waters, your sovereign hand will be my guide. Come on, you say, what feet may fail. start now lean into the ah of that if you Nasal. really it's just yeah it's that but mm-hmm. it's that four bright it's gonna be so much easier won't start now you know yeah you don't sing like won't start now yeah oh my gosh yeah the other thing i really liked is and this is a worship leaderism and mm-hmm. i don't know if we should talk about it but it's something that i have used and it works if you want them to sing and it's a song they know. Like you kind of yeah. have to set it up to where it's a song they know. You have to stop. Singing you have to stop singing, and and encourage people to sing. And it's mm-hmm. it's so amazing that, you know, I would probably not say. I mean, I know when I'm trying to worship, I'm 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 focused on worship worshiping. Mm-hmm. But if I was if I didn't know that and yeah. I wasn't as far down on that path, um, I would just want to listen to Taya sing. I know, right? And, and I love so singing. Absolutely, you know. So then you have people who don't necessarily love singing and live yeah. singing. Um, and so how do you get them to sing with you, with you? Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, just stopping is, a, I think that a is a cool moment. It's actually, it's been a pretty cool moment yeah. at our church a couple of times. And, um, and you just have to set up the opportunity. Absolutely. Um, she just, she does so many things that are, um, like really within our philosophy vocally, you know, when she's singing these verses that are also lower, again, why I would call this song advanced is because the range is so wide. And so she's singing these verses that are a little bit lower and they sit more, you know, in a chestier resonance. She doesn't sound heavy. She sounds like she's speaking. Like she literally sounds like she's talking. And um, I just think that that is the key to doing stuff like that. The key to singing those kind of lower verses and Mm -hmm. maybe less exciting moments um, is to allow your air to kind of just energize your phrase and and bring out your resonance, right? Like you hear beautiful resonance in her singing, even in those kind of simpler moments. 100%. Yeah, 100%. it's so great. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
Okay, can you talk a little bit about if you think she is, like you had said earlier, you know, that fogging a mirror um, and using the air enough to fog a mirror. Do you feel like that's happening at that part of the yeah. verse or of the bridge? Yeah. I feel like that is too. I feel like she's using her, her dynamics are low in that, you know, it's soft, it's a little bit airy, it's a little bit breathy, but it is no less energetic supported. and supported. And I just... I feel like if you were standing in front of her, you would feel it. Yeah. You know? Well, and I think that we had a voice teacher, our, our favorite mm-hmm. voice teacher, uh, the one we stole all of our uh, everything, knowledge our entire and, career. Uh, <laughs> and philosophy from. Um, he said, use all your air all the time. Absolutely. And I found as I matured as a singer, you know, I used to think that loud was more air and soft, mm. quiet was less air, that I almost used more as much or more when I was singing softly, softly. than when I was because it was it's even more spirit lead me where my trust is without borders you just let it pour out of Absolutely. you Absolutely. you know and 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 if you never stop it you'll you'll always have that connected yeah. um energetic sound now yeah. having energy doesn't mean it's not intimate doesn't mm-hmm. mean it's not quiet doesn't mean it's not you know um I think I think when things are high energy yeah it, it commands attention from right. the people who are Absolutely. observing it you know and so it's also like full send right yeah. like you have to just do it yeah 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 and it's just all your air all the time all the time i think so like the idea too that again lots of worship music is like this where it's kind of breathy and airy and it builds to a big belty more powerful thing i believe and i'm speculating here but for most people the hardest part of this song is probably that Mm -hmm. it's probably the softer part Mm -hmm. because i think you either can belt it or you can't Mm -hmm. like at least that's like your average person Mm -hmm. that's leading worship out there that might be you know a teenager or um you know maybe that's not like a professional paid vocalist Mm -hmm. um this song is a beast and i think what's hard about it is let's say you've got that belty part no problem you know it sits in your voice nice but like singing this beautifully delicate yeah do you have the intimate parts? do you have the intimate which is what makes this song what it yeah. is it takes you from here to he- and it's just huge it's huge well and we yeah. talk about all the time people who can only scream like there you find a lot of worship leaders that can only scream and, and i think vocalists even but sure. i feel like it's harder because we specifically in this world you see a lot of amateur singers in churches right that's just the nature of, yeah, of, volunteers, of, of volunteers and, yeah, exactly and so you see a lot of people in this kind of community that are using their gifts but i think what we forget sometimes is that our gifts are also skills like Mm -hmm. they're skills that need to be grown and nurtured Mm -hmm. and you know if we're just talking technically i think you can't just scream this song you have to have the delicate um soft dynamics with it Mm -hmm. you have to be able to um have both ends of the spectrum because that's what i think this song calls for yeah 100 percent. and she obviously does but oh yeah yeah let it be your prayer Just a little bit more.
So I have to comment on one thing. I think she's doing something that is a perfect example of what we talk about all the time on this channel, which is she's showing two different kind of tones. Yeah. So she, when she's like digging in like now, mm -hmm. she's getting really wide with her mouth mm -hmm. and kind of, pu I would say, pushing more. Right. And it's kind of, I, I call it overblown where it's mm -hmm. like, take Take me deep. It's 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 more yelly. It's a little bit mm -hmm. more um, oh, like yeah. kind of full and and, and heavy. Mm -hmm. But then when she goes up, she can't really bring that vowel mm -hmm. and um, I would say T placement. Tamper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Placement. placement yeah. Um, up there. Yeah. And so when she goes up, all of a sudden it's a lot clearer. It's mm -hmm. a lot um, more piercing and yeah. bright. And uh, that's. That's where I w want to sing all the Absolutely. time. You know, just because it's, for me, I, I, whenever I overblow and do stuff like that, cause that's where I've kind of come from. Um, I just hurt my voice. It's exhausting. My voice, it's exhausting. Yeah. And then I can't sing the next song. Well, you know, and we have at our church, we have three services that we exactly. have to sing. So I well, can't really do that. I feel like you can really see her working hard here yeah. in a way that, um, I think it's just a great example because, you know, we don't make these videos to be like, you're perfect all the time. And this is, you yeah. know, like always great. I what think what you should do and what you should no, do. No, absolutely. Not it's colors. Well, and also I think what we love the most is like appreciating live singing. Mm. Um, obviously we're talking about worship, which is a completely thing, like a different thing in itself. But like the basic reality is this is live singing. And with live singing, that means there's so many elements that you can't control yeah. and you just have to keep going. So the element could be, she's getting emotional. The element could be, this has a, been a long day. The element could be, she's on tour. You know, there's yeah. so many different things that could go into why you might be tired and have to work a little harder. Um, and then you could also add on top of it, the fact that you're worship leading, which brings a lot of other things to it. So it's all these stuff that's going on. That's not singing. That's not singing. Yeah, exactly. Not the words and the melody. But I would love to point out, I think even just an example of what you're talking about, like how it sounds different in with those two sort of, um, colors on it and what we're talking about and maybe a little bit why we prefer one to the other because i heard the same thing well and she's used it a couple times throughout yes. this throughout the song um, it's a little wah, it's, wah, it's wah. oh yeah, yeah and it's and it's you know i think it's she's trying to add power or mm -hmm. or the feeling of power <laughs> but oftentimes you know it's just in the same way where we can't we don't know how we sound we can't mm. you know we think we sound a certain way and then you watch a recording you don't sound that way right um it's the same kind of thing where it might feel powerful, mm. but it's not as powerful as you singing with that clear, bright, full resonance. But it's, I mean, it's a tone. And I think that we change, tone, you know, guitar players change tones all, all the time. time. Yeah. You know, several times throughout a song. Yeah. And so That's she, can, she can lead using yeah. tones as well. Totally. So that's a good example. Borders. Waters. Borders. Without borders. Um, you kind of hear how it's a bit more, like I kind of visualize it. It's a little bit more like round, you know? We yeah. talk about sound Heavy. being high, like and having height and like resonance having mm -hmm. height. I feel like it's losing a little bit of that, sure. that height. Take me deeper than my feet. That's like 100%. the exact opposite. Yeah. The exact opposite. All of a sudden it's up here. <laughs> exactly. And it's just in your Piercing. face. Yeah. And it's just, I don't know. I Absolutely. just can't get enough of that. Absolutely. I wish I could sing like that. I know. It's so All good. All the time. All I'm working the time. on it. <laughs> So that was a wild note, right? That, that was, was a, wild. That was totally wild. That was and, also wild after what it came after. Oh, totally. Well, and I would say, you know, we talk a lot about her mouth, you know, being too wide or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's not 
I would say it's not necessarily about the mouth. It's about the vowel. Yes. Ah. Let's listen to it again. So if you really get that, you know, really get you the can't eh, go, ah. yeah, you can't go ah, oh, right? Yeah. It's like ah, and and it might feel to you like that's not a, oh, a pretty sound to sing, gosh. right? Ah, eh, right? It might feel that it doesn't sound good. It might sound, you know, to our ears, it might not sound good. But try it. Try it in the car, and uh, then record yourself. I have to watch it again because I think I was a little surprised that she was going to get there, yeah. honestly. Oh. Um, she rides her air right up there. R- like just, just like a sends, kite. Just sends the air the whole time. <laughs> so I'm sorry. That's a great example. So she's kind of having a little bit more of that like round, almost held sound that we felt. Yeah. And then in that little ad lib that she does coming right up, she really has that piercing. 100%. And you know it because you can hear it off mic so clearly. a taller vowel. Okay, I want to watch and talk about this last, is the chorus? Yeah, the chorus, right? Because she does a really great job of having what we would call like full phonation, like it's not breathy or airy, Mm -hmm. but it's still soft and dynamic. And that's Mm -hmm. another like layer to making this song difficult. (laughs) If you don't know, phonation means just that your vocal folds are fully coming together and it's not airy, it's clear and full sounding. When you have an airy or breathy sound, it means that air is escaping. And that's a, that's an effect that we want sometimes. That's sometimes a product of, you know, uh, anatomy, uh, like nodules, nodes, things like that. So there's, there's reasons for that. But I think that, um, you know, compared to the beginning of the song where she has that breathy, airy sound, this here at the end, we've come all the way back down dynamically, but she has more of a clear tone. There's not a lot of breathiness, but it's still soft. Yeah, you know what I absolutely. mean? And I think I just want to point it out because it's, it's pretty, um, 
impressive, but also I think really appropriate for what's happening yeah. at this point. You have to be really loose, I think, to do that. Absolutely, as well. it's you difficult. Just, it's difficult, especially after a big a big moment like oh. that. You know, I usually come in on softer parts after the big chorus or the big bridge. Oh yeah, and I struggle to have that nice, full, relaxed sound and the clearness of it. Yeah. I think it's easy to just to kind of let breathiness kind of take over as almost a like a lazy way of having dynamics. Like you kind of just, you know, this requires so much. Lazy is sounds so bad, but I'm more mean like less intentional. Well, I, I literally can't sing with the clarity because I because I'm grabbing on so hard for the for the higher the end bigger bits. parts, yeah. yeah, the bigger parts that I to come back down and to reset and and and, and let go is is literally mm -hmm. a technique issue for it's, me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and so this is why I want to point it out because I think this is really impressive and also 100%. what it it's what makes her worship leading so powerful. Mm -hmm. And the these are technical things we see that absolutely contribute to her worship leading. Yep. You hear the difference? It's not keep my eyes above, keep my eyes above the waves. Like yeah. there's full sound yeah. there. And it's not a loudness thing. It's not loud. Yeah. It's not like before where it almost felt like she was trying to pull up a little more chest, sure. like have that. It's not that. And it's yeah. just really like subtle. My soul will rest in your embrace. She's so good. <laughs> really, really wonderful. Really song. good. Really I feel like that's song. such an iconic um, song performance, and she is an iconic worship leader yeah. that I'm just glad that we finally got around to to talking about her on this channel. <laughs> 100%. Well, we absolutely enjoyed that, and we really love just what we can take away from a lot of these really wonderful, um, talented, devoted, skillful yes. um, people. Yeah. and how they use their giftings and their skills and their all their hard work. Yeah. This is a culmination of hard work. Absolutely. Um, and it's just such a such a wonderful thing to see. Absolutely. So, if you like talking about singing, if you like learning about singing, if you like learning about how other people are singing, check out our channel, hit that subscribe button and we'll hopefully see you soon.